It's really an honor to share communion with you, and don't forget that we have communion in person in the sanctuary the first Sunday of every month. Today, we're with week 25 from my book, Do This in Remembrance of Me, The Streets of Freedom. Freedom is a valuable commodity. A great price must be paid for freedom. Countries that have a measure of freedom had to pay the price of blood and sacrifice. There's always a hefty price for freedom. What is freedom? Freedom is, number one, the absence of coercion or constraint in one's choices and actions. People who are free can choose what they think and what they do. God has made us free moral agents. We are sovereign as human beings. We have the power to choose. Isn't that amazing? This is a great freedom we have, but it also comes with great responsibility. That's why God tells us to choose life. Freedom is also liberation from the power of another. Many countries in this world are ruled by dictators. Freedom in these countries is usually curbed by the whims and the egos of leaders who are overexposed and underdeveloped. They don't have the character that's required to handle such power. Consequently, the God-given dignity of the individuals as human beings is violated and ignored. Freedom rests on the altar of the sacrifice of men and women who give their lives, the purchase price for freedom. People will shed their blood to be free because God has incorporated freedom into their DNA. Finally, freedom is the liberty to flourish in life. Those who live in the land of freedom live in an environment conducive for the development and release of their God-entrusted abilities. Freedom is not just the liberty to do. It's the liberty to do what is right in the sight of God. Our freedom came at the ultimate price. A life had to be sacrificed. Blood had to be shed. Jesus offered himself as the ultimate and final sacrifice once for all. We were under the dictatorship of the devil and we were slaves to sin and shame. But Jesus shed his blood for the remission of our sins. We are released from the penalty for our sin that we so richly deserved. That's why Luke quotes Jesus as saying to the disciples, this blood is for you. I said, this blood is for you. We must take his word personally for that word to become flesh in our lives. We must receive it as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually works in us as we believe it. God's word is his agent of freedom. John 8, 31 through 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus declared our freedom on the cross in legal terms. He said, it is finished. It was God's notice to our accuser and his assurance to us that we have the right to walk the streets of freedom. Those streets have some interesting names. Number one, Healed Highway. This highway is lined with banners containing scars and stripes. Freedom from the dictatorship of our flesh and healing abides on this highway. When our flesh is in charge, our lives will be fueled by selfishness and sin. We'll be under the tyranny of what we want, and we won't be free to pursue what God wants. Our prospects of healing will be limited to the knowledge and abilities of doctors. However, on Healed Highway, we are looking at sickness and disease through the rearview mirror. 1 Peter 2.24, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. The term were is past tense. It doesn't say that you will be healed. It doesn't say that you might be healed. It doesn't even say that you are healed. It does say that you were healed. If you were healed, then you are healed. It's already done. Healing is bequeathed to you as a part of his will. See, a will is in force after the death of the testator. It has no strength at all as long as the testator is alive. Jesus died so that the will could go into effect. Then God raised him from the dead to make sure that the provisions in the will are distributed to the heirs of salvation. Healing belongs to us because God included it as a provision in the will. Through his death and resurrection, Jesus is summoning us as heirs to receive the eternal inheritance that was promised to us. Healing is the highway that has already been paved by the blood and sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Jesus repeatedly said to the people, your faith has made you whole. Our ground for faith lies within God's restrictive fence. God has confirmed his promise with an oath and it's impossible for God to lie. See, an oath is a restrictive fence and God has restricted himself with his word. Now, please confess this after me. Healing is a part of God's will and I am included in his will. Healing already belongs to me because by his stripes I was healed. The other street of freedom we will travel on our way to the cup and the bread today is Mercy Way. God extended mercy to us so that we could have a personal relationship with him. According to 1 John 2.2, 2, Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. That means that he is the expiator. He has extinguished our guilt. Jesus is the mercy seat. It doesn't say merit seat. We're not saved by our works. We're saved by grace through faith. By the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. It doesn't say money seat. We can't purchase salvation with silver and gold. There isn't enough silver, gold, or precious stones in existence that could cover the cost of our redemption and our freedom from the dictatorship of the devil. The road to freedom isn't called Merchandise Boulevard. A person's life doesn't consist in the abundance of things that he or she possesses. Uh, my pastor always says this, you never see a hearse pulling a U-Haul trailer with the belongings of the deceased. You can't take it with you and your belongings don't identify who you are. It does say that Jesus is the mercy seat. Out of Titus 3, 4 through 6, listen to this. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared toward men, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. Titus 3, 7 out of the contemporary English version goes on to say, Jesus treated us much better than we deserve. Well, how I know that. He made us acceptable to God and gave us the hope of eternal life. See, regeneration is a reference to the new nature. It literally means rebirth. God took out the heart of stone and replaced it with a heart of flesh, sensitive to him, and sensitive to others. And through the renewing of our minds and our first-hand knowledge of God and His will, we can enter and stay on the healed highway and mercy way. Now, I encourage you now to pull over to the rest area. Let this all sink in and partake of communion by faith. He watches over His word to perform it. It is for you. Father, we thank you today for the communion elements. We thank you, God. What they represent is so powerful that this isn't just a ritual that we're going through. But God, it's a meaningful, powerful experience as we partake of the cup and the bread. We remember that you died for us that we might live through you and because of you. We thank you, God, you're shed. Your blood was shed for the remission of our sins and your body was broken for our healing. So we say again today, by your stripes, we were healed. We thank you for it now in the name of Jesus. Let's partake together.